I now yield uh, five minutes to the gentlewoman from California, Congresswoman Speer. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, if, if the people of America didn't create the problem, who created the problem? If, if the people of America didn't create the problem? You said the people of America didn't create the problem. So tell us who created well, it. Well, I, this, this, Were this, the banks involved? Well, I would say this. This was this problem. There's so much blame to go around. You, it, it's hardly. Well, give us a few. It. Give us a few people. Uh, okay. Few institutions. Well, you look at excesses had been building up for a very long time. In this, I just want you to give me some names. I have a limited amount of time. Well, well, would we include okay, the banks? Would I'll, I'll we include Goldman? Okay, would we include AIG? Okay, would we include anyone who got TARP could, funds? You could say financial institutions, regulators investors, uh, uh, so that th there was plenty of mistakes by a vast uh, multitude. Of You'd be interested in knowing that in a financial services committee yesterday, all the banks were represented and they, um, almost to the person, indicated that they weren't responsible for this. But let me move on. Um, do you use email? Do I use email? No, I don't use it personally. You don't use it personally or professionally? Yeah, I just don't, so I've, I've never used it for any business communications, just never use it. So while you were Secretary of the Treasury, you never used email? No. How did you communicate with people? Telephone. All right. Um, did you know Mr. Lewis before you were Secretary of the Treasury? Uh, yes. For how long? I, you know, four or five years. Did you know him socially? No. But professionally, you knew him. Professionally, I know him, yes. Okay. Um, when you gave B of A and Mr. Lewis $15 billion in October, he didn't want it, we were told. So why did you give it to him? Well, that, that is certainly not my recollection, but let me tell you why we, we gave it to them. Very briefly, because I have a second question I want to ask you. Okay. Then, very briefly, after we got the TARP authorities, and when the system was on the edge, and we needed to move quickly, we, deci we decided that the only way to do something that was going to be dramatic and make a difference was going to be to put capital, get capital out quickly, and get it out into nine systemically important major institutions. So we called them together, uh, the regulators let them know what the recommendation was for each institution, and Mr. Lewis, like the other uh, CEOs there, uh, very willingly agreed to take that capital because they recognized that they had as much to gain as anyone from the stability of the system. All right, so you gave him $15 billion in October and then another $10 billion in January 9th and then $20 billion on January 20th. It's interesting that that amount of money equals about $45 billion. They paid $50 billion for Merrill Lynch. In many respects, I feel like the taxpayers bought Merrill Lynch for the Bank of America. Well, I, I, would, I, I would say this to you. The, the taxpayer is benefited in two ways. Uh, first of all, I would be very optimistic that the taxpayer will get all of that money back with a profit, number one. And secondly, what the taxpayer got was a, an averted calamity because if we'd had the financial system collapse, uh, the, the taxpayer would be the, uh, would, would be the people that would be hurt. All right, let me ask you this. Um, this press release went out from your office as Secretary of the Treasury on January 16th, and this press release talks about the package to the B of A and specifically says that the Treasury and the FDIC will provide protection against the possibility of unusually large losses on an asset pool of approximately $118 billion of loans. So this ring fence was a done deal on January 16th. Well, what, what, when what, you were Secretary of the Treasury. We, we worked out the details and, the, and put out a term sheet, but this deal was not closed then. And I left Treasury. Well, how could you possibly say this publicly if it wasn't closed then? Well, because it wasn't we, a deal. We, 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 so we, were you giving him something or giving B of A something that, that they didn't actually have to agree to but give the appearance that they had something and then they could renege on it? Congresswoman, I have no idea what happened after I left. So but how professional is it to put out a, a statement in a press release that something has been consummated when it hadn't been consummated? Well, uh, Listen, we tried to... I mean, that's kind of like 
I, I, I'm getting contracts 101. No, I, I'm, I'm getting it from both angles here. People wanting me to put out letters when there's nothing to disclose. Here we had, we, what we did is we communicated to the market that we had a term sheet. The market knew that this deal wasn't closed yet. We were announcing a deal with the intent of closing it. And why it didn't close, y you'll have to ask uh, people that are, th that are at, at Treasury today. Mr. Chairman, I, I certainly would hope that we would question further who was responsible at that point in time for these negotiations so we could have them come before this committee. I yield point. back. Good point. Thank you very much. I now yield five minutes to the gentleman from Indiana.